Hello everybody, my name is uh, Joost Wetzel. I work as an architect at uh, My Architects and Planners from the Netherlands. And I'd like to show you something about our project, uh, the cheese warehouse in uh, Gouda. Um, here you see uh, in a picture uh, the old uh, cheese warehouse. In the middle, it's two big blocks in the center of the picture. Um, and it's uh, yeah, the only big cheese warehouse in Gouda. You all know this uh, Gouda cheese. It's uh, world famous and Gouda is the cheese capital of uh, the Netherlands. Um, and uh, these two warehouses uh, stored all the cheese for the farmers, 170 farmers from the Gouda region uh, in it. Here you see uh, the history. It's uh, 100 years old and it was extended uh, a couple of times and it was all done very sophisticated. So it's in the end, it uh, came out as uh, two big uh, uh, volumes separated by an alley in between. And here you see how it works. So all the farmers uh, from the area brought their cheese to this uh, uh, warehouse. It was weighed and sold to the warehouse. There it uh, went uh, uh, down for ripening, as you can see here on the planks in this uh, uh, warehouse. And then after a couple of months, it was sold to the shop owners uh, that uh, would sell it uh, to the clients. Um, it's a very nice uh, complex. It's an industrial complex actually, but also nice office uh, uh, area in, uh, in it for the cheese warehouse itself. And uh, when we uh, came in here, it was still intact like you see it here on the, on the picture. So it's uh, quite unique. For 100 years, it serves like a real nice uh, warehouse. Um, when we found it, it um, it's, uh, became vacant because uh, it was uh, getting too small. And also uh, the climate was uh, harder and harder to uh, maintain because of all new regulations. Um, and in the meantime, it uh, had become a listed monument um, because of the, yeah, the value of it for the growth of uh, Gouda and uh, the ch history of uh, cheese making. So here you see the, uh, the cheese warehouse with these uh, tiny little windows. It's a very dark uh, complex, actually. And uh, when we entered it for the first time, there were still cheeses in it uh, and 40 kilometers of these cheese planks um, where all the cheeses were stacked uh, to, uh, to rest. Actually, the building was full of cheese. Um, there was uh, space for 100 million kilos of cheese. Um, so the biggest were laying down in the basement and the smallest, the uh, so-called eight damages, were laying in the attic. And there was a separate construction actually for the cheese. So you had uh, two constructions, one for the cheese that was uh, uh, founded on these uh, steel columns all through the building to a separate foundation. And the uh, building itself had of course also its own uh, foundation. And that made it also possible for us to transform this building uh, into a housing block. Here you see the uh, small alley in between uh, the, the two buildings. And this has a very important role in the process of cheese making because it's very important for cheese to lay in a dark environment, but also the humidity is very important for the cheese. So there were all uh, wooden hatches uh, hanging here. They are taken out now. Um, but also in the interior there were these shutters and uh, in this way they could manually uh, control the humidity and uh, light in, uh, in this uh, warehouse. Um, and now we had the opportunity during the crisis to uh, buy this uh, complex together with uh, someone uh, um, that uh, uh, could uh, um, help us finance this. Um, and in that way we were able to uh, control the whole process of designing um, finding a builder and um, making this nice brochure. This is a sort of symbol for it. And find clients uh, to, uh, to sell the apartments to. So what would, did we do? Um, first of all, the cheese uh, liked uh, the darkness, of course, but uh, people, especially in the Netherlands with our bad weather conditions, uh, need daylight. So that was the first thing to solve because um, uh, this was a listed monument. We had to be very careful and respectful to this, uh, to this building. So we s searched for a way to let daylight enter in this, uh, in this complex. So we winded up this uh, alley in between the, the two buildings to make a new atrium. Uh, there in between. So here you see this alley going through the complex um, and we widened it up to make this, uh, this atrium. Um, and at the same time, uh, we managed to make very precise openings in the existing facade. 
to also uh, let uh, daylight enter there and make outdoor spaces as well, because we were obliged to make them also uh, for the housing uh, program. Um, here you see the alley during uh, the uh, execution. Uh, so here we started uh, carving out uh, this, uh, this uh, atrium. And we had to take out a part of the floors and uh, facades around this alley to um, make uh, it possible to enter this, uh, the daylight, uh, to let enter daylight in this, uh, in this new atrium. We added a new steel construction uh, in it um, with uh, the elevators and uh, 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 staircases uh, to uh, make uh, access to all these uh, new uh, apartments and put a glass roof on it uh, for the light uh, to come in. As you can see here from the street level and the surroundings, you cannot see this, uh, this atrium. Um, but um, yeah, by placing the main entrance uh, of this uh, complex in the alley, I already told you about the importance of this alley, um, we gave it uh, even more importance. And now everybody is entering the complex through this alley. And at night, it uh, glows up like uh, the new heart, actually, of, uh, of the cheese warehouse, as you can see here. Uh, we also managed to make some hidden outdoor spaces in the attic uh, connected to this, uh, this alley, as you can see here on this picture. Um, and uh, the incisions that uh, I told you about, uh, we made them in a such a way that we could respect the pattern of uh, these small windows. As you can see, we also uh, um, brought back the, uh, the hatches uh, on the facade, and uh, this rhythm continues while we were able to make uh, these uh, openings. And here you see the effect on the inside. Eh? So in this way, it was a, a, a possibility to, uh, to live in this, uh, in this monument. Uh, other uh, challenges that we had were the wooden floors and the steel structure. So we had to take out a part of the steel structure, of course, uh, because uh, there was a very dense pattern of columns. Uh, so we uh, strengthened the columns that were left there. And uh, the green part on the scheme that you see is an anchor that we put through the wooden roofs, because we, the wooden floors, because we wanted to um, keep these uh, ceilings uh, in, uh, inside, uh, because they really add to this atmosphere and history of, uh, of the warehouse. Um, and we poured concrete on the existing floor to make a new slab and solve fire safety and uh, acoustic problems and stuff in that way. And it was connected with this green anchor to the existing steel structure. Um, then we had in the atrium the opportunity to uh, uh, place the elevator in the old uh, uh, alley width. Uh, so when you enter the building, you enter through this alley, you enter the atrium, then you can go into the elevator through the old facade, you go up between this old facade and you go out to your apartment through this atrium. And while you're crossing this atrium, you can see that the cheese planks, the 40 kilometers that I told you about, are used as uh, cladding for this uh, uh, new uh, facade on the inside. So all the worn out places, all these round uh, shapes that you see on this wood, uh, they were uh, ca carved out actually because of the turning of the cheeses for 100 years on these planks. So it's really part of the story of uh, cheese making and part of the identity of this uh, building. So we thought it was very nice to reuse it in this way in the new complex. So here you see the result of this. Um, it's an open atrium because of uh, fire safety and ventilation, of course. And a nice feature that we found is this uh, board game that we found in the archives of the cheese warehouse. And it was given to all the people um, that uh, made the cheese, all the farmers. And it's uh, from the 50s. And in the 50s, they tend to tell you exactly what you had to do uh, in the Netherlands. So it's full of rhymes that uh, yeah, sound very uh, nice, but actually they instruct you how to work in a hygienic way uh, and how to make the best cheeses and uh, that sort of uh, things. So we thought it was a nice idea to carve these rhymes out in the, this wood. And when you walk through this atrium, you sometimes see these rhymes. Um, and in that way, uh, it's a whole collection, actually. Um, I practiced uh, one because it's all uh, old-fashioned Dutch, so I tried to do it in Italian. Um, the one on the right-hand side says, uh, Un buon bidone di latte uh, ha sempre adorato una bella spazzolata acqua bollente e bicarbonato. 
So. <laughs> Thank you very much. Other things that we found uh, in this uh, cheese warehouse are these numbers. They were actually uh, hanging uh, from the wooden planks and hold the administration. So we use them as door numbers for all the apartments, for the people uh, that uh, uh, enter there. They can, that's all related to this uh, identity. And it's also the um, visible circularity uh, that we uh, made possible in this way. Now then quickly something about our lofts. Uh, so here you see the original attic, the way we entered these hidden balconies in it, uh, with the old uh, structure inside, because we insulated from the outside. And people living in there, we helped them planning the layout of their uh, apartment, so everybody got this voucher to have two hours of input of our office. Um, and uh, people thought we were crazy to uh, develop housing during the crisis, because no one was buying houses. But actually, in within two months, people uh, uh, all the houses were sold, and even people were moving in from other places to Gouda to live in this cheese warehouse. So we are very proud of it uh, that to do it. So here you see the effect with all the details uh, in the interior. And now it uh, really adds to this nice neighborhood. It's still there. The old, it's not, not turned down. Um, and it uh, adds to this uh, nice environment uh, to live in the city center of Gouda. Um, thank you very much. Uh, I don't know if it's allowed, but I thought in the context it would be nice to hand you all over a bribe of Dutch cheese, so I'll bring it to you. Can I just ask, were you also the developers for the project? Yeah, we were part of the developers, yes. And is this a common trend? No. In Open, so quite yeah, it's a trend, that's true. Uh, it's something that uh, started in the, during the crisis, because this was a way to, to get to work. Um, and uh, yeah, our uh, director took this risk, uh, and it worked out well. super nice in the end. Yeah. Okay. Any questions? How many apartments? 52. Yeah. <laughs> and we have all kinds of apartments. So we have very small ones going from 60 square meters. It's larger than Hong Kong, of course, but 60 square meters up to 170. So uh, in that way, we could also make a very nice mixture of, uh, of uh, inhabitants uh, for this cheese warehouse. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome.